assalamu alaikum students today our topic under discussion is another viral disease named as rinderpest or also known as cattle plague rinderpest was a disease of cloven hooved animals characterized by fever necrotic stomatitis gastroenteritis and lymphoid necrosis and in animals high mortality in epidemic form it was the most lethal plague known in cattle coming towards the historical importance of this disease the need to combat rinderpest provided the impetus for the establishment of first modern veterinary school in lyon in france in 1762 After several decades of success in eradicating the rinder pest from Europe, the disease reoccurred unexpectedly in Belgium in 1920, and renewed efforts to eradicate it resulted in creation of World Organization for Animal Health (OIE) in 1924. after the creation of food and agriculture organization fao of the united nations in 1946 the oie and fao signed a cooperation agreement in 1952 thereafter the two organizations were major participants in several worldwide campaigns to combat rinderpest which culminated in global eradication of the disease in 2011 in fact the last reported rinderpest outbreak occurred in kenya in 2001 but a 10 year active surveillance period was necessary before global eradication could be declared rinderpest is only the second viral disease after the smallpox to have been successfully eradicated worldwide coming towards the etiology of uh, rinderpest the virus is a morbidly virus closely related to the viruses causing pesty despotitis rheumatitis and measles and canine distemper strains of uh, varying virulence for cattle occurred and could be differentiated genetically however a single serotype of virus existed and a vaccine prepared from any strain could protect against all the strains coming towards the transmission the rinder virus pe- uh, virus rinder pest virus is shed in nasal and ocular secretions and can be transmitted during the incubation period 1 to 2 days before the onset of the fever the transmission required direct or close indirect contact between the susceptible animals and sick animals shedding the virus the role of fomite in transmission was negligible because the virus is fragile being inactivated within 12 hours of exposure to the atmospheric heat and light there was no carrier state and recovered animals acquired lifelong immunity in endemic areas young cattle become infected after maternal immunity disappeared and before vaccinal immunity began with possible auxiliary cycles in the wild ungulates coming towards the clinical findings after an incubation period of 3 to 15 days fever and then anorexia depression and ocular nasal discharges develop followed by necrotic lesions on the gums buccal mucosa and tongue the hard and soft palate were often affected the oculo nasal discharge became mucopurulent and the muzzle appeared dry and cracked diarrhea the final clinical signs could be watery and bloody then the period of recovery was prolonged and could be complicated by concurrent infections due to the immunosuppression morbidity was often 100% and mortality was up to 90% in the epidemic areas now pathological lesions 
occurred uh, throughout uh, the gastrointestinal tract and upper respiratory tracts either as areas of necrosis and erosions or congestion and hemorrhage can be seen later creating classical presentation of zebra stepping in the rectum then the lymph node could be enlarged and edematous with wide necrotic foci in the pear patches histological lesions include lymphoid and epithelial necrosis with viral induced intracytoplasmic and intranuclear inclusion were often seen here you can see in this animal the mucopurulent uh, conjunctival discharge is seen and here you can see the oral lesions this is the necrosis and fibronecrotic exudate in the small intestine this is the exudate and the necrosed area you can see different sides of the intestine coming towards the diagnosis it is recommended that post eradication laboratory diagnosis of rinderpest focus on molecular techniques such as reverse transcriptase pcr which are not only accurate but also allow for the phylogenetic analysis to pinpoint the source of the re-emerging virus strain more rapid and more discriminating tests such as antigen capture elisa and reverse transcription pcr were favored toward the end of their eradication campaign so these both tests are effective for this now coming towards the control in control firstly it was recommended to quarantine the animal and slaughter the animal or cull the animal then active immunity to rinder pest was lifelong whereas maternal immunity lasted 6 to 11 months so control in endemic areas was by immunization of all cattle and domestic buffaloes greater than 1 year old with an attenuated cell culture vaccine known as thermovax so this was all now i'm going to summarize this uh, topic so rinder pest was the first animal disease to be globally eradicated and because it was such a surge and reemergence remains a possibility it is a vital to maintain current information regarding its uh, reoccurrence rinder pest was a viral disease of cattle and other ruminants domestic and wild animals characterized by fever erosive stomatitis diarrhea and high morbidity and mortality in the post eradication era testing for rinder pest preferably using molecular method should be considered when the etiological agent cannot be determined for the infectious disease with characteristic signs of rinder pest this was all thank you so much